Hello guys, uh, Krill from Sky Drones here. Um, today we have a flight test uh, with uh, 4G and 5G technology. We have X700 drone around here. We have the laptop running the Sky Drones cloud. We have the handheld here. And uh, most importantly, we have this um, envelope here, which was presented to us by uh, British Telecom, BT. Uh, spe special thanks to uh, Ed Hunter uh, for working on the drone program. And what we have here is the two SIM cards, which provide the real-time connectivity for drones. They are specifically optimized for uh, drones and BV loss and unmanned systems. So this SIM cards will go into another vehicle and this SIM card is already installed here in this one. And now we will try to see how it performs in terms of the real-time connectivity, video streaming, telemetry, and so forth. So first of all, uh, let's prepare the drone for the flight. So what we do is we power on the system with this button. So we hear a few bips. So it's loading. Now we just remove the protection from the props. That's good. And here we have the controller. So we take this one out, remove the charger. It's important to put the antennas on before we power on the radio module. So this helps us to avoid the RF module damage, potentially. So once that's installed, we power it on normally, just like any standard Android device. So while it's booting up, let's clean up a bit on the table. Make sure the antennas are down. These are actually LT antennas. Uh, this is GPS. There is an air link inside. Uh, this is SkyDrones cloud running and connected to internet uh, using just wireless connectivity uh, from cell phone tethering. So we power on the radio module by pressing this button. So it loads up within the next 20 seconds or so. So we're waiting for the connection. Um, in the meantime, we have the connection already established here in the ground control station. So here you can see the map where we are currently based. So that's the drone, our initial position at the flight test field. And this is the information uh, with generic telemetry. So it shows the basic status like uh, battery, remaining flight time, uh, GPS satellites number, connection quality, um, and etc. So then we are just waiting for the connection to be established here on the handheld. It takes normally about uh, 20 30 seconds, so it shouldn't be too long. Also, we can check that with status on the LEDs here. So they are free, free green, which shows that the RSI signal is uh, stable now. Hold flight mode. Yeah, we have hold flight mode notification, which means that we are. Uh, connect to the drone now. Again, here we have also the real-time position parameters currently being loaded. Uh, let's just try to make that a bit brighter. So we can adjust that here, set to the maximum. And that's the real-time video feed. So if you go around here to the front side of the drone where the camera is and try to wave the hand in front of that, we can see there is uh, very low latency. So it's real-time video streaming uh, straight from the drone to the ground station. Uh, and we also have the video feed over there in the cloud. So now let's bring the drone to the initial uh, takeoff position. For safety, we just uh, go there a little bit. So this looks like a very good spot. So let's make sure that we have the mode settings set to mode 2 for the controls. Okay, looks like it's correct. Your throttle. Okay, all looks good. So now what we do, we check that we are in position halt mode. Position flight mode. So we switched. And as the next step, we do Armed. arm and take off.
Okay, this hovers nicely. So what we can see again is the real-time video feed coming from the drone. That's the position. Uh, that's all the status we have here. It's maybe just uh, a bit too bright outside, so we try to adjust that so you can see it more clear. So let's try to rotate 180 degrees so we can probably see ourselves. Hello. So that's ourselves waving the hands and uh, that's how you can check the latency, which is pretty good. So let's try to fly a bit out a little bit. So you can see it's uh, nice and smooth and pretty comfortable. Okay, in the meantime, let's go back to the computer and check the connection, which is um, from LT and coming on the SIM card. So that's the web page loaded, and here we can see the uh, telemetry. The video feed is coming. We can make that a bit bigger with just uh, we adjusting the position of this box. Yeah, that's a bit tricky once on the trackpad. Cool. So here we can see all the basic information. And again, if we uh, change the position of the drone, we can see the real-time video feed around here. You can see there is uh, very low latency and the quality is uh, pretty good. What we can compare also the video feed here on the controller and the video feed over there in the cloud. So that looks um, pretty good and stable. So it's flying forwards and we can see the real time video update both in the cloud and on the GCS. So that's also the real time position of the drone. If we do 108 degrees yaw, we can also see pretty much ourselves. Let's get a little bit closer. Yeah, that's the real-time video feed coming from the drone into the cloud, and it can be anywhere um, on the distance, so we can fly drone somewhere in the US, for instance, and be here in the UK, just like we demonstrated uh, a couple of weeks ago at the Blueprint launch event at Trenfeld. So also we can do pretty much uh, lots of autonomous capabilities, uh, and yeah, we can leverage the benefits of 3D maps. So that's how we can see the drone itself. Uh, and the terrain and um, the environment and what's around us. We can also do a lot of various autonomous flight features. For instance, what we can do is just uh, autonomous landing if we want to bring the drone back. So what we press is just uh, the land button and then we do uh, slide to confirm. And that's going to be autonomous landing, and that's how we can basically fly drones without any pilot intervention, and you don't really need to have any flight skills. Position, flight, move. I just overridden that, so we keep the drone in the air, and now let's try to do uh, some speed testing. So we can actually go into the AirLink uh, console using the SSH, and then we can run speed test and see what the speed shows us for the uh, BT SIM card connection. So that's the planet Earth, that's our location, that's the generic telemetry about the drone. So the video is picking up, so we can see that the video is identical to this one and there is now that much latency. So if we reposition the drone, so we can see the reaction is almost instant. So the latency is less than a couple hundred milliseconds. We can also yeah, increase the size of that window in case we need more detailed look. So here it's flying autonomously. Let's just uh, put this one here. And now we can do the um, speed test. So what we do, we go into the um, AirLink uh, command line. So we have to close that session, open the new one. So that's standard SSH admin at airlink.local. And then we have the speed test CLI installed over there. So we 
run that command and that's going to measure the speed of the connection. So we have ping which is about 56 milliseconds, currently we're testing download speed. about uh, 4.5 megabits per second and the upload speed is going to be yeah 2.5 milliseconds or uh, megabits per second sorry so that's the yeah average upload download speed it's not too much but uh, considering this location it's say uh, it's probably okay so it's more about that uh, we still can get the video feed. For the video feed, we normally need about a uh, couple of megabits per second uh, for the good quality. And you can see the drone is uh, pretty stable up in the air and uh, flying nicely. So that's pretty much it. What I'll do now, I'll just uh, take the controller and then we can do the autonomous landing, for instance, to demonstrate the so we just uh, click land, flight confirmed, and then it's landing automatically. After landing, it's going to be uh, touchdown, motor stopping, and then auto disarm. And that's what we have just seen. Disarmed. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and that was a really good test, and I think that's helpful in terms of understanding how we can use uh, drones with 4G connectivity, and soon it will be also. 5G, Airlink actually already supports 5G, but it's more about uh, dependency on the network infrastructure. So thanks for watching and uh, looking forward to see everyone at our flight test and tell. Thanks and have a good day. Bye-bye.